Hi everyone, <clears throat> today I want to talk about a 1948 film, Night Has a Thousand Eyes. This is a recent Blu-ray release from Kino Lorber in November of 2021, starring Edward G. Robinson, and it is right in the midst of the noir movement, and it is indeed a noir, as we can tell from the, uh, um, uh, from the great artwork on the cover. Uh, and it falls into a kind of subgenre, um, uh, which I guess would be clairvoyant noir, supernatural noir, because uh, it, it is concerning Edward, Edward G. Robinson, who is playing a, uh, a clairvoyant, a successful one. He fills up theaters. We see him uh, performing his act, and it is indeed an act, uh, along with his, uh, his assistant, who, who he is engaged to, and his best friend who plays the piano, we learn early on that this is all a trick. <laughs> and uh, that, and, there you, and the, you even get an explanation where the songs that the best friend is playing on the piano, which was being used for like background mood music, uh, depending on what he's playing, it gives the hint to Edward G. Robinson, whose character is called Triton, uh, whose, whose stage character is called Triton, um, uh, the, the clues to, to, uh, to uh, provide him with information about people in the audience who have written things down on a, uh, in, in an envelope. Um, so we know it's a trick, they talk about it, uh, but then one night, um, while on stage, Edward G. Robinson suddenly gets this vision that uh, a couple that are in the audience, their son is home and, and he is in danger please go home quickly. And then he, the vision goes away and he says, oh, what, what was that? You know, I mean, and, but then he finds out the, the son indeed was in danger and uh, as uh, a fire was, was in their house um, and he was saved. So, um, uh, so, but this spooks Edward G. Robinson, he doesn't want to have it, but then they use it for horse racing, they use it for stock market when he gets a vision about something and they have potential earnings, but it's 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 uh, it, it, it's not setting well with Edward G. Robinson. He doesn't he, he he's he's a very much scared of this of this presence. Uh, he, he begins to think maybe he is actually for, for pre for uh, for for uh, deigning what's actually these and it's all these uh, visions of of people that he sees involves death. Um, so it's a nightmare uh, dilemma. And uh, very much in par with the uh, with the literature of Cornell Woolrich. This was a novel. Uh, this was a movie based on a novel by Cornell Woolrich. And in the in his films, basically, you have this nightmare uh, situation. Um, uh, you're caught in some sort of delirious kind of trap, with the emphasis on a kind of delirious and a morbid obsession with death. And um, so. Uh, uh, and, and Edward G. Robinson uh, goes into a kind of self-isolation. He doesn't want to be part of anything. He just makes a meager, he could become rich through, through these visions, but he just, he uh, goes into a, uh, a kind of cheap hotel room and just uh, barely subsists. And this is the way he wants to live. And as we learn in the commentary, this is pretty much how Cornell Woolworths lived his life. He he, he lived with his mother from uh, hotel to hotel, and then when his mother died, he became increasingly alcoholic and became very much a, a, a recluse. And the first two thirds of this movie is really catching the deep melancholy, I think, of Woolrich, as you see in some of his other films. And Edward G. Robinson is absolutely brilliant in this role. I mean, it, um, you really feel the pain, the agony. Uh, and and uh, the dreams that this is not uh, th this is not something that he 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 wants to celebrate. He wants to get rid of it, but it's it's his destiny. Um, so the first two thirds has this melancholy uh, uh, aura to it, and then the last third, I got to admit, it's a little bit contrived. Uh, they they <laughs> how do you get out of uh, uh, the situation that that that, that comes about? Um, it, it must have been difficult, and and there's added comedy in the last third of the movie is William Demarest from Preston Sturgis movies, comic actor, comes in and he plays the lieutenant, and the, all these um, 
all these predictions that what these visions that Edward G. Robinson has had have had to come out into the fore, but the police disproved them all. At least they think they're disproving them all. And Demarest plays the very skeptical police lieutenant um, who uh, is trying to protect the, the woman played by uh, Gail Russell, uh, who, who's, whose life is on the line. Um, and the, and the, the, um, the, the film is, is photographed by John Seitz. Seitz is, is largely forgotten. My last uh, uh, video, uh, I mentioned Nicholas Musaraka as being a, just an unsung hero of the film noir era. Uh, and Seitz, of course, also was. But, but as, as Musaraka came out of obscurity in the 1930s, uh, Seitz goes back to the 1920s and consider, was considered a, uh, a master cinematographer. He worked with Thomas Inns. I'm learning all this from the commentary. Uh, but I did know Seitz from uh, Double Indemnity, which he filmed a couple years before this, before uh, Night Has a Thousand Eyes, so we, which is uh, like one of the hallmark looks of, of, uh, of film noir. Um, and this, this is a, the third film I've seen this year, directed by uh, John Farrow, who uh, known today probably more for being the father of Mia Farrow, the grandfather of Ronan Farrow. Ronan Farrow. Um, but he was, uh, he made, he, he never really had like this big moment in, in cinema, but boy, he could churn out some pretty good movies. And as the commentary mentions, he wasn't even in Andrew Sarris' seminal American cinema um, book in, in the late 1960s, how overlooked, disregarded he was, but uh, there's also a very supernatural element in another Kino Lore movie that came out this year, Elias Nick Beale, uh, which Thomas Mitchell is the, um, is the uh, uh, character who is caught in this kind of moral dilemma, uh, Ray Milland being somebody <laughs> who is coming, uh, is, is is there to uh, lead him astray from from the the true path in order to gain success and then there's also the big clock and the big clock is uh, with Ray Milan and Charles Lawton uh, the, this I, I don't know when this one came out but it certainly it, it um, we have Ray Milan playing a tortured character tortured because he doesn't know what to do this is Edward G Robinson Thomas Mitchell they don't know what to do <laughs> How did they get out of this uh, moral dilemma in that movie where Milland uh, has to investigate himself as being the murderer, the possible murderer of, uh, of this man that uh, he did not kill? Um, and and uh, the commentary, and I might as well say it's by Imogen Sarah Smith, she mentions, as, as the commentaries on those other two movies did, that Farrell loved these long takes. I, and I also love long takes. And... Uh, uh, and there's there's quite a few of them in uh, Night Has a Thousand Eyes, and it 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 involves the actors in a more theatrical way. Uh, the audience doesn't really notice it, but you 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 sort of you sort of see it because some of the scenes sort of like stage plays, but then you also have to have really good camera movements. Hollywood sort of scorned the the long take, but uh, because they took. It was such an elaborate setup, technically, and then the actors all have to meet, meeting their spots. Uh, so, um, and uh, Imogene Sarah Smith tells the story of uh, of Pharaoh on uh, uh, when he was making Western. He had this really elaborate shot that went all through a town, and the studio was like, "You're wasting so much money that you're taking forever to set the shot up." But then, once it was rehearsed, uh, he actually ended up saving like two, three days. <laughs> of, of, uh, uh, of um, scheduled time in the budget because you could get, there was no need to even edit any of this stuff and get all this coverage because the shot worked, worked out so well. And, and also, Farrow loved to uh, fill the screen with uh, people, and I think that was, on, that, that was mentioned in the, in, the, um, in the commentary on uh, The Big Clock, and boy, do you get that here. I mean, he just, <laughs> Farrow just put so many people, he, he could, he, he, if there was one little element of the, of, the, of, of the screen that wasn't filled with a person, sometimes you just see a person walk through in the background. Um, 
And so I mentioned Edward G. Robinson, always fantastic. John Lund plays the, uh, uh, the uh, fiance of the woman whose life is in danger. He's a serviceable actor. He's, he's rather bland. Um, and as Imogene Sarah Smith says, he knew that himself. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but the woman in danger is played by Gail Russell. So I'm a, you know, I'm a big fan of Gail Russell and uh, I have uh, The Uninvited and, um, and uh, Moonrise and um, uh, she's just, I don't know, she has these big, sad, large eyes. She has a, like an almost ethereal presence and this is a, a role really, really uh, suitable for, for her kind of screen charisma, quietness, a naturalism, which of course was totally different than what she really was <laughs> because she was so anxious. They used to have to sometimes tie her hands because her hands would shake. Uh, she was uh, full of anxiety. They, they, she had to be coaxed to, to come onto the set. Um, but what's amazing is it, it, it works. <laughs> she works in the movie. Um, and and, um, and I mentioned it, the commentary by Smith, which is one of her best. I mean, it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful film. She doesn't overpraise the film. She, she will point out some of its weaknesses. Uh, but uh, again, the themes of it, the themes of uh, Cornel Woolrich, uh, John Latimer, who, who wrote the screen, one of the two uh, screenwriters, uh, Barry Lyndon, uh, who, who is a fictionalized name, uh, an AKA name for a writer whose name I can't remember. Uh, they, Latimer wrote a lot of John, John Farrell movies. Um, also, this was a 2K restoration and uh, my last, uh, uh, my last uh, uh, video um, was uh, from a 4K restoration that just knocked my socks off from black and white, the spiral staircase. Um, this is a 2K restoration. It's certainly very good, but after watching <laughs> the spiral staircase, this isn't quite on that same level, but you still get to uh, appreciate very much uh, John Seitz's uh, 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 beautiful and masterful cinematography. Okay, that'll about wrap this one up. Uh, thanks as always for everybody who managed to listen to me. I do appreciate it. Comments are welcome. You guys take care.